Good day, fellas, and thanks for joining me. As you may or may not know, I am currently building a custom playbook in order to best replicate the offense that I watch my beloved Cowboys play in real life. However, I have received a ton of requests regarding the best stock playbook to use to replicate that Cowboys scheme. So today, I'm going to run through some viable playbooks and analyze the formations and plays available within those playbooks. Then I'm going to narrow it down and find the most suitable playbook, giving my reasons why and explaining how we will make it fit our scheme. And I already ran two games using this playbook, so I'll include some gameplay at the end of the video. So if we're going to replicate the Cowboys offense, or any offense, you need to think about key formations. So I watched the Cowboys film, and these are the things that I can say in terms of key formations that we're going to need to make sure we can get in our playbook in some way, shape, or form. Now Dallas like to use a lot of 3x1 sets with 11 personnel, and they regularly line up in wing formations with 12 personnel. Of course, they also use various formations with different personnel, but these are two very common things that we see with Dallas. Now that said, we also need a very good doubles formation or two, because Dallas very often start in doubles with 11 personnel and then motion somebody over to make it 3x1, or they'll start in doubles with a tight end on the line and a tight end out wide on the same side, motion him into the line and make it a wing look. So we want to make sure we're able to mirror those subtle details that really make it feel like. That said, of course, the 3x1s, the doubles, and even the wing sets are generally easy to find because they all exist in a multitude of playbooks. So what formations does Dallas use that will really add some identity and separate them from other offenses? When I first started this project, some of you may know, I identified Empty Ace Patriot as a must because Dallas uses Ace personnel empty sets occasionally. Now, if you missed that video, I did document it, so I do have a link down in the description. Go check out the Empty Ace video. Now, I mentioned Empty Ace Patriot, however, it is also in Miami's playbook and Miami was the offense that I chose initially because I preferred the supporting formations in Miami as opposed to those that were in New England. And of course, those are the only two playbooks with this formation. However, as the weeks progress, I am seeing the Cowboys more and more implementing and increasing their use of empty quads and even bunch quads. So if you saw the game this weekend against New England, you would know exactly what I mean. They used it a good bit. And now those two formations, because they aren't used regularly by most teams and they aren't in many Madden playbooks, that makes them very unique and will make an offense very much identifiable. So we will be remiss not to take them into account. And remember, we can make empty eights by substituting eight personnel into another empty set. So let's take a look at empty quads first. And when you do, you'll discover that it's only in two playbooks, Baltimore and Arizona. So we'll look at those playbooks and see how they fit, if they fit. So looking at Baltimore, there's this obvious lack of single back formations. So that honestly to me is a non-starter for a Dallas scheme that incorporates a fair bit of single back in their offense. So there really isn't any need to dive further into the Ravens playbook as far as I'm concerned. Now the Cardinals on the other hand have a little more in the way of single back formations. Still not a whole lot, but enough variety to make it work if need be. A couple different bunch formations. We got the wing which is important and doubles wide off, which I think is great. So that gives us something we can work with, I think. Hey, on another very interesting note, look at this. Arizona also have bunch squads. And as it turns out, they are the only team with both formations. So that's a huge plus and something we have to keep in the back of our minds moving forward. Another thing Arizona has that is important to the Cowboy scheme are these orbit screens that you'll find in slot offset. Alright guys, so we're not going to waste your time. I actually did take a look through the Carolina playbook. I took a look through the Vegas playbook and the Cincinnati playbook. Those are the other offenses that have bunch quads. I didn't find any of the orbit screens that I'm looking for. So I'm not going to trade off empty quads and not get anything tangible in return. That to me makes little to no sense. So we're back to Arizona right now. Um, I will say, I know that Chicago has the orbit plays that I'm looking for in doubles offset week and trade open offset. But they don't have either of the empty quads formations. So that's going to be a hard pass. So Arizona with both empty quads and bunch quads plus the orbit screens out of the split back set are the best choice for what we're trying to accomplish. Arizona also have the wing sets, 
plenty trip sets and double sets to facilitate the offense we're trying to install. So I'm going to start this scheme with a few key formations and we will highlight them as we build this scheme. So I'm going to break it down. I'm going to be starting with open flags. That is, if you look at the tape, they use a ton of different alignments, interesting alignments, and quite often they do stack wide receivers and tight ends behind linemen or behind other tight ends, similar to, to the way you see the tight end wing flexed in this formation. So that's something that we can go ahead and say is pretty identifiable with the Cowboys offense. Of course, it's, a, it's identifiable with others as well, but we want to make sure that we are justifying our use for certain formations. And I think open flex, because of the fact that Dallas are one of the teams that do that, I think open flex is a great choice. The other thing that's great about open flex is that the balanced nature of the plays in that formation make it perfect for this scheme because we can aggressively attack any defensive front and any shadow with this one formation. And I'll start to show you some of that in the gameplay. Empty quads and bunch quads. As stated, Callum Moore is using these formations with more and more frequency. He's putting defenses in a quandary while his talented receivers rack up easy yards. Split offset. We see the Cowboys using these split back sets. They sprinkle them in their offense. They actually used it a couple times against New England. Uh, a halfback run for one. And in fact, they did an orbit screen for one that didn't really go anywhere but two yards. So it's going to be important for us to fit this in. Not only for the orbit screens, but the plays that build off of the orbit screen, where you fake the screen, and then traditional passing plays and running plays as well. So we'll go ahead and lab that. Uh, single back doubles wide off close. This formation is a great one to give an unbalanced doubles look because the Cowboys do those things quite often. They also incorporate heavy pressure now with this look, which we can do with a few quick substitutions. This is another thing you will see in the gameplay. There is a jet pass available in this formation that I haven't labbed yet, but I did go ahead and try a couple times in game, so we'll see that. And the Cowboys do use jet passes, so all of these things are relevant. So wing formations, they got a single back wing flex close, they got gun wing flex weak, and wing slot offset. So I think that's enough for us to go ahead and incorporate the wing formations because as mentioned, the Cowboys deploy a heavy usage of those. So we will be spending a considerable amount of time making sure we get these three formations working similar to the way they do for Dallas. And of course, this is going to be a multi-part offense. So I will update the plan with what I'm doing with the various doubles and trips formations after I spend more time labbing them. Getting those right is imperative, as Dallas not only use them a lot, but they are all strung together. As I mentioned before, Dallas very often motion from their doubles looks to wing or doubles looks to trips, and even vice versa. So it's important that we get those in the lab and really make them look similar to the way that Dallas uses it. So that said, I mean, make sure you have all your notifications because there are going to be plenty of updates and you're not going to want to miss out. So for today, we're going to hop in game and focus primarily on open flex. We're going to mix in some single back doubles wide off close, some split offset, a little empty quads, and I mean maybe a sprinkle of some other things. Okay, so before we jump in game, I'm going to explain why open flex is a vital part of this offense. Now this formation has a ton of useful plays in it, so my audibles, my play calls, and even my personnel usage are going to vary situationally. I typically make sure I have audibles prepared that I can attack any defense, so I start with either vertical tight end out or dagger as one audible. Dive and halfback toss are going to both be in there, and then I'll have either axe seam or double post as the other audible. So I'm usually going to come out in one of the RPO plays, either counter alert screen, read wide flat, or my personal favorite RPO wide receiver screen, which I will start this and many games in. So why these audibles? Well, vertical tight end out and dagger. The tight end out and the halfback delay route are the exact same on each play and they're a great one two underneath read. The vertical tight end out now attacks deep, exposing gaps in zone. And dagger pairs perfectly with it because the route's initial stems are also vertical, but then one of them breaks off into a curl and the other one breaks off as deep in. While the innermost vertical route continues vertically clearing the zones and is most likely to draw the user defender if he doesn't follow the underneath stuff. So you usually get a good opening for that deep dig with that route. Dive and toss, the purpose for them is pr pretty obvious. I mean, it's a great one to run punch. These are options that perfectly complement each other. We're obviously going to run dive if the box is light or spread out and we'll hit the toss when they start adjusting to the dive by pinching their D out. 
Now X-Seam and Double Post, those are great plays that feature tons of crossing routes, so that all sets everything our opponents are doing to adjust to what we're doing vertically. With the right mix of underneath options, these can give defenses headaches. And RPOs, I mean, these are great to come out in because they offer options. I mean, just by the, the, the nature of their name, right? And those options essentially give us a lot of power. I love the option route in RPO wide receiver screen. Y'all have seen me use it in offense dating back to Madden 21. That hitch gets seven to eight yards with ease versus backdoor coverage. So if you hit that early and often, that's one of those things that you can use to dictate certain aspects of your opponent's defense. Now, if you call it and you're wrong and the DB bites down, then by all means, give the rock to the halfback and whether you gain a ton of yards, a little yards, or even lose yards, you at least didn't risk throwing a pick. Because if you throw a pick out there, that's, that's six going back the other way, no doubt about it. So you give it to the halfback, you take what you can, and you remember those adjustments that your opponent made. Put it in a memory bank, prepare yourself for that chess match. Now, I haven't run counter alert in game yet. I've used it in the lab and it's money. I intend to use that when I get a user adjusting to the dive and the toss. You know, they'll shift to the side of the toss, but make sure the defensive line is still tight. So you're not really, you don't really have to run. Now, mind you, the dive, you can bounce out. But this counter, if, if I get it right, this counter is going to be very nice. So keep an eye out for that. And the Y flat play is great. I've actually used that in a few games. Um, not in these highlights, unfortunately. But the truth of the matter is, I don't use it as much because the DBs are playing it very weird this year. Like the way they bite down but don't really play it. So I use it sparingly. And for the most part, it's versus users that I know are uh, either dropping that slot DB into zones, blitzing him, or leaving the slot uncovered altogether. So let's jump into game already. On this first possession, we see the DBs are backed off, so we're going to go and throw our hitch to Coop for an easy 8 yards. We get a look that favors the dive, so we're going to run the dive. We only picked up 1 yard, but it's good that our opponent knows that we are willing to run it. Here, we run the tight end out. Pick up an easy first down to the tight end. So, right here, we're going to jump into single back doubles to mix it up. We already had the dive on our mind, and last the box was ridiculously stacked. So, we're going to go ahead and hit the dive for a solid four yards or so. Now jumping back into open flags, we insert our 12 personnel using the tight end slot package for better blocking should we decide to run it. And we put Tony Pollard in to rest Zeke, but also to get our faster back into the game. First snap we come out, we see no one outside our left tackle, so the toss is the obvious call. And just like that, we bang a 40 yard run. It was a perfect call and perfect personnel for the situation. Next, we see the box is light and our opponent spreads his linebackers. So without hesitation, we're going to run the dive. After a 10 yard pickup, we only have inches to go, so halfback swing from double post should be easy yards once the post and the tight end swing clear the way. Alright, so we're jumping back into single back doubles, we're going to insert our heavy person now because we want to just bully our way into the end zone for that 4 yard touchdown dive.
Now, in these situations, the two-minute drill uh, before the half and after the game, I know a lot of users back off the coverage far too early. So I tend to look for a short pass that I can get to the edge and pick up some yards along the way. And there you have it. So we picked up 10 yards, we got out of bounds, we stopped the clock, and we got on a hash so that we could be in better position for a shot play. That couldn't have gone any better. I still have a lot of lab to do with quads, but one thing I love to do is call verticals, and if I see a single high safety, I'll leave it stuck, because the inside drag is a great check down, while the outside vertical routes do a great job manipulating zone against single high. But if I see two deep safeties, I prefer to actually streak my tight end and then drag the outside receiver for the opposite effect. I, I like the inside streaks with the inside vertical routes versus two high safeties. So now we're going to try to have some fun with split offset. So we run motion stock, it got box versus man. We throw it away to avoid the bad play. The most important thing here though, is that we see what our opponent's doing. I'm gonna call motion spot, and I'm gonna go ahead and have a drag from, from my outside receiver, and I'm gonna put coop on the outside apprentice post. This is um, a concept that I've used many times versus two high safeties. What happens is that corner route on the wide side of the field should hold the safety on his side, and the apprentice post will be able to have enough room to go ahead and split the DBs, usually for a touchdown. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead into single back bunch tight end and we're gonna try this power run to see if we can pick up a few yards. Now let's jump into doubles and try this sweep. We absolutely want a jet sweep in our offense. Let's see if this one's any good. When you see your opponent get a face mask call, you know your opponents change their strip ball to aggressive. So keep that in mind too. You might want to sometimes put on ball carrier conservative just knowing that he's out there trying to cause a fumble, right? So we jump back into open flax and our opponent shows press. So we prepare the audible out, but then he backs his DBs off. So I give it a second and then fire the hitch out for the easy break. Of course here, we know what this is. It's a favorable look for the dive. So let's go ahead. Let's not force any pass or force anything unnecessary. It's also a point in the game with a lead where it makes sense to run the ball. Once again, our patience pays off. We pre-diagnosed the defense. We made the call that we knew was best for the situation and we pick up touchdown. All right, so the final possession, I'll just let it play out. Um, I was really just messing around. To be honest, my son woke up um, when I was on defense last. So I had my son on my shoulder and I was really waiting for the game to end because I'm done. We did get two good plays out of slot offset using the, the fake orbit. Um, we threw the hitch one time and we ran zone on the other. So go ahead and make sure you don't miss that.
I'm gonna go ahead now and play some highlights from another game. I'm not gonna go ahead and talk through that one because to be completely honest, the reads are the same. If you see anything in there that you have a question about, let me know. And when I watch it back, if I see something that I feel like maybe I should have spoke on, I'll put it in the comments, right? So, hey, thanks as always for the support. It means a lot to me. Look out for these updates to the Dallas Real World scheme using the Arizona Cardinals playbook. Until then, hit the lab, give them half. Appreciate you.